Hi, and welcome back. Welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here on Nantucket. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. Uh, my day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, but this is not about my day job. It's about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've been to the Senior Center, see one of my presentations, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if it's on Nantucket, especially, they don't wanna go anywhere else, the mainland, God forbid Martha's Vineyard, no, they wanna stay right here. And so the question is, if you're like Frank and Mary, who are the people you need to know and what are the, what are the programs you need to know about in order to stay right here? Now, most people, a few people know me, but everybody seems to know Alison Forsgren, my wonderful co-host who has been on the island for just a long time. We're actually seeing the very tip of the ear of her. Oh, there is your cat just appearing on the screen. She'll, the cat will be there. and and. And she finds these great guests. And we have a wonderful, a wonderful guest today um, who works at a wonderful place. So Allison, whom do we have today? We are very, very happy to have Allie Rowell. She is the activities director at Our Island Home, Nantucket's only skilled nursing facility. Um, she's relatively new in the job, started right at the beginning of COVID, and she has done an incredible incredible job. So we're here to check in with her on the things that she has been up to recently and um, just what's going on at our island home. It's great to see you, Allie. Great. Uh, great to see you guys both as well. Thank you so much for having me. It's nice to be back. So what, I know that you had prepared something because of the changes that have been made at Our Island Home in communicating with families and loved ones as there has been no access up until recently for visiting. So how, did, how has that happened? How has that progressed? How so, did it start and how are you doing? This past year has been a year of change for sure. Um, from the very beginning, I started back in January of 2020. So I had a good uh, two months under my belt before COVID hit and we had to shut the doors and kind of reevaluate our planning altogether. Um, so it has been a pretty, a pretty steep learning curve, I would say, a lot of adjustments in every department, not just the activities department, um, but we're really finding throughout all of this, this past year, that's been very difficult in a lot of ways. There's a lot of silver linings if you're willing to look at them. Um, so when you guys first contacted me about this um, show today, I immediately thought of the topic of tech savvy seniors. Um, the adaptation I've seen from this resident population has been quite astounding. Um, so I'm happy to be able to share that with you all. So um, how do you, so I know that you have, um, received grants for technology that are actually in the hands of residents. What do you, how, how does that happen? How does it work? Right. Um, so CMS put out, uh, and that is the Center for Medicaid and Medicare Services. Um, that is a federal agency. And they put out at the very start of COVID, I would say, close to April of last year, 2020, um, they put out a lot of information about how to receive federal funding for communication devices for residents. Um, so what that means is tablets that can go on Zoom, um, perhaps maybe a resident phone line, um, and we have expanded that as well. Um, just a lot of different options for us to play around with um, in terms of getting residents connected with their loved ones, despite it being different than how they're used to or historically have been used to. Um, so we purchased nine newly refurbished laptops for our residents, and we also got 10 brand new um, Android uh, tablets for the residents. And those have been very well loved and used even by staff too. Whenever there's a Zoom meeting and someone needs to pop on, they'll grab a tablet. So it's really nice to be in a place where we have devices readily available. I think that's quite rare. Um, so we're very lucky for that federal funding. Um, I think also in the very beginning stages of uh, these changes, I think there was this kind of mentality of I heard, I heard a couple of people say at the very beginning, you know, an old dog can't learn a new trick. And I, I really think that the evidence we have here in this home is contrary to that. These folks can absolutely adapt 
to something new, new routines, new devices, um, whether they're learning and fully retaining that information, uh, we don't care so much about as long as they're able to use it in a way that's functionally ready for them, adaptable for them and comfortable for them most in, uh, most importantly. Curious, um, with all of the new technology, um, who taught them? How, how did it all get set up so that it could run smoothly? I mean, that's not anyone's, I mean, there's no IT people there at our island home, I wouldn't think. so. Uh, how did it work? There are not <laughs> there are not any IT members in house. Um, that is kind of a hat that I have had maybe placed on me as one of the younger staff members here. Um, but it's been something I've been very willing to help with, whether it's helping a staff member with a laptop or getting residents connected up on tablets and laptops themselves. I've also configured the tablets, especially when I was first unboxing everything and setting everything up. There are a lot of settings in those types of tablets where you can make font larger and bolder for easy reading. You can limit the amount of apps that are on the home page so you can quickly select the things that you would like and residents can see that large. Um, and it, there's also options too for um, just in terms of the applications you have on there. We have things such as Tablet Bingo that has been a hit, Tablet Dominoes, Tablet Kino, um, all different types of things. We've tried to hit every, every point with them uh, in all sectors of activities. Actually, I, I went to, I don't know if it was, I think it was the Christmas party where where it was, a, you could zoom in and actually see everybody open their gifts and talk to the screen. And I was just marveling that everything was going so smoothly. I mean, I must commend you and the staff for really without any volunteer support, um, making it look so fun and easy. Well, thank you for that. I, I think this past year, one of the challenges we've definitely encountered is that lack of volunteers, visitors, and, and family guests. Um, prior to COVID, we were heavily relying on those folks to engage residents, spend one-on-one -on -one time, um, and just keep an eye after them too. We had folks coming in every single day to visit their resident and they would kind of be tending to others too. Obviously informally staff is always there in case anything specific was happening that needed addressing. Uh, but that was definitely a huge gap we had to fill really with our own team members in-house um, during this past year. That was definitely a big challenge, but we see that it, it can work out. Um, another one of those silver linings is those special events, whether it was our Thanksgiving Zoom, which we titled Zooms Giving, or our holiday Zoom party for more of the Christmas type holidays. Um, we were able to get a huge turnout from the community, whether it was family members or just friends, loved ones. Um, and it was just this really, really cool opportunity to see how incredibly uh, adaptive, again, that the residents are going right up to the screen, kind of peering around in there. Who's that? Who's this? Um, they are not shy of technology. So I think that's been one of the really cool things that I've been able to see is how their their relationship with technology has really blossomed during this experience. I didn't see that coming at the start of all of this, um, but it's been really, really nice to see. Can I just can I just comment? I think that that's a really interesting point. That one of the and who would have guessed that? But that that the that that perhaps by virtue of having a lot of folks who kind of have some memory problems, mm -hmm. they're kind of they're not going to be anxious about some of this stuff. You know, it's just like every day's every moment's a new moment, and so that they're really willing to be really engaged with you. That's really fascinating. Whereas yeah. for many for many others of my age, including me, right? I'm, I get very nervous about the tablets and all of this because I'm like, oh, how am I ever gonna figure this out and blah, blah, blah. So that's a, that's a fascinating revelation. And I, so I guess I was curious, as you're watching it play out, Allie, do, do, how do you imagine this playing out in, kind of in the longer run? Do you think that is, as, as things open up and people are going back, Mm -hmm. I had volunteers are coming back. Do you think that many of these things will continue to be kind of a more of a part of your program or, or just I'm just wondering about your thoughts about that? 
I think we will absolutely be integrating these type of uh, programs that were um, developed kind of as a response to COVID. I very much think that we'll be keeping those things around and integrated into our activities programming long term. Um, off the top of my head, I can think of a few really good examples of uh, not just for a game or watching a show, um, which we do a lot of, but also in terms of like religious engagement. We've had residents have Bible study Zooms with their loved ones. I have one resident who meets with um, a member of her church weekly and he just prays with her um, and we kind of pray along with, um, I kind of prompt her to do the motions and she loves it. Um, you would be amazed to see the way someone's face lights up. Um, and especially for folks further along on the dementia spectrum, um, it's, it's like the, the first time every time. Um, so it's that same kind of like, wow, this is really cool. I, they're not here. I know that, but I get to see them. Um, and so it's been such an honor for me to be able to kind of watch that genuine amazement and awe. Um, and I would say also on the tech end of things, our baseline is very much we go into it expecting there will be issues. There will be hiccups with tech. We're not always going to get it right, but we strive to fix things when they come up. Um, so I think the residents are, are really, really good at being flexible too. That's been another silver lining of this, just seeing how resilient and um, flexible they really can be. It's astounding. And so, and so, so tell me um, about the occupancy, how things are going, the staffing, how are you feeling about um, where you are right now? I know that there have been a, you know, some, some changes in staff um, and yes. how's, how's that all working out? I mean, as far as residents, I mean, you were explaining to Arthur and I about, about, um, about the, 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 the number of people that are there and what you're allowed. Can you tell us, um, a little bit about the things that have had to happen to, um, accommodate COVID? Definitely. Um, so I'll do staffing after. Let's start with residents. Um, so on a normal non-pandemic day, <laughs> um, hopefully some juncture in the future we'll be back to that, we have the capacity at our island home to house 45 residents. Um, with COVID restrictions, there is DPH and CMS guidance and, and uh, protocol that we have to abide by and we always strive to. Um, we must keep at least three rooms um, set up for quarantine if, God forbid, we had any signs or symptoms or exposure to COVID. Um, so each of those bedrooms has two beds, meaning that a total of six beds are tied up for COVID precautions. Um, that means that we can have now at most 39 residents at a time, and currently we're at 38. Um, so I know that there have been a lot of questions from community members about whether or not their loved one can come to our island home. We are absolutely still re um, re receiving and accepting referrals, um, and we're happy to do so. Uh, that has not changed at all. Um, in terms of our staffing profile, we have had a couple changes. Um, we do still have an interim uh, administrator. We currently have Robert Eisenstein um, of Eisenstein Flaherty, and he has just been incredible. He's great to work with. I think he is pretty well loved by staff and residents alike. Previously, we had Peter Holden, who was very similar, um, very, very well liked and loved by residents and staff. Um, we additionally have a new interim DON, Director of Nursing. She currently is Dottie, uh, Doris Enos, uh, registered nurse, and she's lovely. Um, she's new to the team and certainly new to the Director of Nursing uh, position, but she's been doing an incredible job. We're very lucky to have all of our interim folks. Um, and I, I even have heard things too. Uh, we were recently on a DPH conference call and just, I think there is a high level of turnover right now, just with regard to staff burnout, um, feeling uh, maybe overworked and, and uh, I, we're not as, as much seeing that here though. So I think that is something happening nationwide. And certainly we've had a few changes, folks leaving, folks coming, but it hasn't been anything like a mass exodus or anything like that. Um, and we're very hopeful it stays that way. Um, I think that's one of the benefits of working at a home like our island home. It really feels like a family here. 
Um, so I think people are very hesitant, even with all the changes that have come because of COVID, people are very hesitant to sever any ties with our island home. We, we generally like it here. <laughs> <laughs> so what were, what have been some, some highlights, um, you know, regarding technology or just things that you've been able to do um, with, with the residents and staff. I know Debbie Bechtold has been incredibly um, yes. helpful and um, continues to be. What are some of the things that are favorites for the residents uh, to do at this point? So we offer some special events that are seasonal, and then we offer day-to-day -day activities. Day-to-day, -day, we're very much enjoying having the laptops hooked up to our big screen TV in the living room. And that allows me to be able to access Netflix, Amazon Prime, and give us um, more variety to our viewing. We can watch shows and do different installments. This day we're watching episode one, next day episode two, that sort of thing. So there's a continuity there. And then we're also just able to watch movies, game shows, and other things like that. That is very well enjoyed by the residents. In addition, we've kind of integrated uh, some new things, um, such as uh, there's this channel on YouTube where they build log cabins out in the middle of nowhere by hand to our hardy uh, Nantucket residents here. That is very much up their alley. Um, so that's something that's been kind of out of the box, uh, a little bit uh, unorthodox in terms of activities, but something that they've loved. Um, I think in addition to, we have those seasonal events. So that would be something like Zoom's giving or the holiday Zoom party. More recently, we had some performances. Um, early on in the pandemic, we had Jim Seltzer Zooming in with us often to perform for the residents. And more recently, we've had Paul Connors uh, pairing with the Saltmarsh Senior Center, um, putting on performances for Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day. And that's a really incredible experience for them to be able to not only see Paul performing, but then you have members of just the community who have Zoomed in to join. So I have many times where someone says, I haven't seen that person in years. Um, so it's a really cool way. I think it exhibits and highlights uh, a way that we're, form we're actually forming more connections now, um, maybe ones that weren't available to us before. So that's been really lovely to see see. Um, I'm just looking at my notes here to see any highlights. I think also we do um, a lot of religious services, as I said. We'll have services on Sundays, whether we're watching the Summer Street Church service on Facebook that's live streamed so that someone can really see their pastor in their church um, preaching and, and performing a church service, um, whether it's the Jehovah's Witness zooming into the Kingdom Hall and seeing all of the folks that they're used to seeing twice a week. Um, that's been really, really lovely, a nice way to maintain those relationships. And then more less seasonally, uh, we have uh, weekly groups that we run. So we have Susan Richards of the community school zooming in with us at least once a week. On Wednesdays this morning, she ran a Our Island Kids and Animals Zoom group in which we typically have some school children zooming in, maybe kids that are not currently in person at school. Um, so that's a really nice way to get them involved. And we used to have a children's group come in. So it's nice to be able to see some of those familiar faces again. Um, and then they have animals too. We've had a duck. I think we had a chicken the other day. So that's been kind of fun. Um, the residents seem to really enjoy that. And then every other week, Susan Richards also runs a book club for us. Um, so that's been really, really cool forming new relationships and, and kind of finding ways to continue programming that we were running before, but now in a different way. And you uh, mentioned Debbie Bechtold. I have to give her a huge, huge shout out, especially right now. Um, we're down a couple activity staff members, and she has just been so imperative to the success of the activities department. I do not know how I could do my job without her. <laughs> So it, as just as once again, as an observation, so you've really taken this time to actually expand the connection of the folks at our island home to the other people in the island. And, and, and once again, the technology kind of gives you the ability to do that. And I suppose that's, that's another one of those things that's, that's really going to, con that's going to continue now as people, I, I, once again, speaking for myself, and I don't think I am alone. I, we had had 
on our big law firm you know, system, we'd had Zoom available for many years. Nobody used it, like nobody. I'm, you know, not only we of the older ones, but none of them. And now 100% use it. Everybody knows how to do it. And it's just transformed society. So, you know, the, when you describe the way in which you can not only continue to have your the residents, you know, very connected to people that they left kind of left behind, you know, people, although I, I always thought what was unusual about our island home compared to any other nursing home I go to was every other nursing home I've ever dealt with, you'd always feel like there was like a moat around it. You know, and people were like, "Oh, I don't know if I want to go in there." You know, that's what that's where the that's a bad. And but our island home, I never felt that. So there was always that real good interact, like that kids group. You know, but the notion of having them avail, having them available to an even broader constituency, and even now to people who are off island, and who can just kind of can you know who are the relatives from far away, and you know if you know back here on the mainland, far away is you know, a 10 minute trip and there it's like a two hour trip, right? So to have them easily be able to get access is really terrific. It's really, it's really terrific. Even beyond just kind of regionally folks reconnecting, we've had folks zoom in, I think our farthest away person was in France. Um, this was a resident son that she hasn't seen in years. Um, didn't really do Zoom before and now was kind of more open to it as it's become more normalized. I think in day-to-day -day society, we're all on Zoom at some point in the day, it feels. <laughs> um, so he <clears throat> has uh, kind of connected with her in a way that really wasn't happening before. And that's been, a, again, one of these like kind of magical silver linings and a very unexpected positive outcome of COVID. Um, are these connections either we're reconnecting folks or forging new relationships? Um, it's been really incredible to see. And so I know that there have been some changes um, when it comes to visiting. And um, and I understand that there are also going to be permanent changes in the way um, people visit the residents. Can you talk a little bit about the new protocols and, and, and what can be expected um, in the coming, hopefully short time period when it comes to um, visiting I, I i mean i will um, so the, the, you know i miss seeing people and um i'm hoping that the wheelers program might get up and running again that was always something that i per personally loved but how uh, what are the new changes when it comes to first family visitation and then um hopefully getting volunteers back in how's that going to work so there have there have been a lot of changes. I would say the landscape of visitation has shifted drastically with COVID. Um, fortunately, since the start of COVID, we've been happy with this new technology we've acquired um, through funding. We've been able to connect folks over virtual platforms such as Zoom, FaceTime, other types of Messenger, Google Duo. Um, we've been able to do that for quite some time. I would say actually about a year now. We've been engaging folks in virtual visitation. Um, then I remember last year we looped in uh, window visitation into the fold. Um, and that is where we position a resident inside facing the large glass doorway, the family members on the outside, and then they connect over phone. Um, and that's been really, really lovely to see too. In some ways, when you picture it, I think it, it looks either a little silly or a little even sad, but residents have been loving it. Um, they, I think they find it kind of peculiar that they're talking to their loved one through a glass door, um, but they're, they're open to it. They're happy to do that. I haven't had any complaints about those types of visits. So we've been doing virtual and window visits for some time now. Um, we're also very happy to announce that we have a new website for scheduling as we've been able to broaden the offerings for visitation. Um, so now what is included are three different types of in-person visitation. This would be in-person bedroom visitation for folks that are fully vaccinated. What qualifies as fully vaccinated is two weeks at least post your final vaccine shot in the series or the single shot with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Um, so that is an offering that we have not been able to put out there for a year. We're very happy to have folks back in. Obviously we have to follow strict protocol with that, but it's it's we're edging back toward a little bit more normal. Um, 
So those visits have been going well. We unrolled all of this last week, actually last Monday, and we've already had, uh, I think, about 10 people in the building for visits, uh, for that type of visits, which is brand new. Um, the second type of in-person visitation is conference room visiting. So this would be for folks who either elected themselves not to get vaccinated, which is entirely their choice, um, or elected not to have their resident get the vaccine, or if they just prefer to have a little bit more structure and more distance between themselves and the residents. We have a lot of community members and resident family members that have been very cautious and very, very careful, um, which I think is I at least very much appreciate that approach. I know it's been excruciating not to see loved ones. And I think all of our staff can relate to that in some way or another. Um, but seeing how careful and the trepidation that folks have, I think to me is a good sign that we're taking this as seriously as we should be. Um, so that's a really, really nice thing to see, but we do get folks into the conference room um, and the, those visits have been going well as well. And then the final form of in-person visitation, which will pick up more so when the weather is nicer and a little bit warmer, um, will be outdoor visitation. Um, so all of those options, whether it's virtual, window, in-person, those three different types of in-person, conference room, bedroom, and outdoor, and then also, of course, compassionate care visits, um, they can be booked online. So we have a website now, uh, www.calendly dot com slash our island home resident family members can go on there themselves read through the different descriptions of the visit types see if they're qualified for them and then they book it themselves um, so it's we're really happy to be in a place where we can offer a little bit more flexibility a little bit more independence with scheduling and like i said that's been up and running for about two weeks now so uh, it, we're in a good spot with it we're still working out some kinks as to be uh I, as I expected, I think, um, but it's going really well overall. Allison, yeah, I know my 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 unfortunate one of my jobs here is to act as timekeeper, and I'm looking at my clock and saying, "Oh God, this has been really interesting," and I got a bunch of other questions, but I think I think we need to kind of wrap it up. But I think, but wow. I, I would I think we would appreciate it though if you could, Allie, if you could send to our folks, our friends here at NCD yeah. TV some of that contact information and the information yep. regarding what to do regarding signing up, that would be a big help. And sure. I know for, I bet for a lot of folks on Nantucket, they're gonna know that COVID is over when they see the wheelers wheeling people around town, then they're gonna know we finally we finally all made it. So Allie, thanks, thanks a million for this. We really appreciate it. You know, you've got a day job, you're still in the middle of it. So thanks for being able to take some time. And mm -hmm. Allison, thanks for continuously bringing these great folks that I think the other folks on Nantucket really, you know, it just really helps in terms of getting a, a sense of what the community is doing. So these are really important issues. Yeah, no, so thank, thank you. you. I mean, I, I mean, I would have you on like, you know, once a month because yeah. I think it's important for people to hear what's going on in our in our lovely small, um, one hundred percent. No one got sick. I mean, it's just incredible what you guys have done there um, compared to what a could have happened other places. So thank you. Yes. Thank you all. It's been, a, it, it's, been a, it's been a wonderful thing. And also our ratings go way up when you're on. So we're gonna have you back a lot. <laughs> so thank you, Allie. Thank you very much, Allison, always. And folks, we, we hope you enjoy these programs and, and connect with the folks at, at our island home. Allie is dying to hear from you and so are her friends there. So thank you all for watching and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here on Nantucket. Thank you very much.